Yeah, he's got some issues. Um, he's a complicated guy. Um, but I think he's incredibly human. You know, I think we meet Peters all the time. To be in something that's so well received is, is a totally new experience for me. I in no way imagined that we would go to Broadway, let alone be nominated for 13 Tonys, let alone that I would be nominated for a Tony. Sometimes I feel like she's the voice of reason, and sometimes I feel like she's the lit fuse. The Tony nomination is so sweet, it's so lovely, um, I, I kind of can't believe it. It's a dream of a role to play because he goes on such a difficult and rewarding journey. I feel like I start understanding my own experience the more I'm not only playing Diana, but just being a part of this play and listening backstage. And David Ajmi just wrote such an incredible human story that I think it, it touches everyone. What a gift to be able to do the work. It's, it's been really cool. Got my ticket to the masquerade. Just to hear three people sing in harmony is such a beautiful thing, and it's so it's so comprehensible just on an animal level. When you hear people sing beautifully together, you're like, oh, they're meant to be together in some way. And then to see them fall apart, you you're like, no, but you sing so beautifully. Like they're yeah, it, it's a very um, intuitive reaction to it, at least for me. Yeah, and this is very much you know about how. How do people work together and this really extreme situation of people working together where they are getting back together and are breaking up at the same time as they're having this tremendous success, at the same time as they all know they might be making the work of their lives, at the same time that there is enormous suffering. And then every now and then they play a song and the heavens open up. And uh, it's a really unusual and intoxicating mix of elements. Floor Tom, uh, I think we're ready for the band. This is the most thrilling role I could ever have imagined for myself. It is uh, such a privilege um, to be a part of this play, and particularly in this role, I really connect to Grover a lot. Um, I love how complicated he is. I love, you know, I think there's something about um, being a sensitive man uh, in a culture that doesn't always value that. It's, it's so much to absorb, it's so surreal, it's so wonderful. Uh, my parents are levitating, what can I say? This one is, is wildly meaningful to me and it's probably because I grew up in New York City. I started seeing plays at a very young age. My mother, my single mom, took me to see theater anytime she could and this is just like beyond anything I could have ever dreamt of. This, this role is very challenging in that my character spends a lot of time holding his fire. That I'm the one sort of just trying to sort of keep everything status quo and can just try to keep the peace. And I'm getting in so much incoming fire. That's one thing that, 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 that the play does brilliantly is you're constantly having your allegiances uh, questioned and, 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 and you're constantly going back and forth and you think oh okay this finally I have somebody I can identify with and then they just do something or say something just so awful. I guess for me appropriate is just to play about family and to play about America. <laughs> you know that's kind of it and I you know I believe that the best experience in the theater you can have is one that just leaves you with something whether it's a new thought or an experience to ponder you know I love when people say to me I've been thinking about this play for days that means that I feel like we did something right you know. You know everything begins with the words on the page um, and we um, had the gift here of a writer <laughs> who um, uh, I, I, I have um, privately described Brandon's writing as catnip for actors um, <laughs> you know it is it is writing of such vitality such muscularity and hilarity and robustness that it is um, it's a thrill ride for performers so the first blueprint is what he's offered to these actors um, uh, what he demands of them and what he inspires in them well this is the first time I've been nominated for a Tony and so that feels really really special to me 
Miss Amy Lou says. You ain't working for Miss Amy Lou no more. You're working for me, Pearly Victorious. Freedom is my business. It feels as if uh, we are acknowledging the legacy of Ozzy Davis and Ruby D, and it feels like this nomination is for her. It's um, super meaningful to have a reappraisal of this American classic. Uh, and political satire is hard, you know, you got to walk that line of comedy and drama. You have to play with the tempo, you know, and for me, I pushed them faster tempo-wise than any time in their lives because it was always about getting to the church, getting to the last scene. You have to stop this campaign against You could stop it at any time. How? Confess and resign. You the thing that I just love about this play is that John asks us to consider the possibility that doubt is a unifying concept. To question what we know is inherently human and maybe something that's more important than ever in our, in our culture. It was a dream come true. I mean, I, yeah, I can't say enough about Liev Schreiber and Amy, Ryan and Zoe Kazan, just extraordinary actors and extraordinary human beings. I'm concerned about the relationship between Father Flynn and your son. I don't know, sister. You may think you're doing good, but the world's a hard place. She is a powerful, powerless woman. She uh, is a person who is willing to risk everything she has known her whole life in the church in order to protect the children at all costs. Um, she's funny. <laughs> she's strong. Have you noticed anything, Sister James? I want you to be alert. I've done three American classics, and I thought, well, this time I want a brand new experience. I want to try something that's never been done. I want to see, you know, what it's like to create a character that is, that's never been seen before. You know, it's 40 years in their lives. A lot of times she's in turmoil. I love to play emotional turmoil. <laughs> I don't know why, but I do. Makes an irrevocable mistake in judgment and uh, then lives the rest of her life really in the shadow of that. It's such great writing that it's inevitable what happens in a way. It, feel, it feels very lucky for one thing, but it also feels very symbolic. There's, you know, there's really no time that any of us are apart on stage once this show starts. And family dynamics are so specific and unique, and they're also so common in a lot of ways. I think it's one of the great ironies of specific personal writing like Paula's. To be here with the two of them is like unbelievably meaningful. When there are only three people in a cast, like the system doesn't function if one of the people isn't there, and so it felt like I was just so grateful to the nominators for recognizing all three of us. It's, it's an incredible honor. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's sort of a trope to say that you feel humbled and honored by something like this, but it's genuinely true. It's very meaningful. The theater for me is sort of the highest bar uh, as an actor. You know, this, this art form uh, it's the highest level of difficulty and you know you're putting everything on the line and everything to the test every single night. To do this on Broadway was an extraordinary challenge and working in the round is so hard <laughs> but really we were able to bring it to life in the best of ways. I think it's very elemental and, um, and it honors the original text and it, but also celebrates Amy's like modern words. Um, it was really incredible. But we start in a very dark place. We're using oil lamps and candles, which is a very thrilling thing to see on Broadway and isn't used a lot. And we, we start in this like dark, cozy nighttime space. As the play grows, you know, we're really tapping into the magic of the Norwegian light and um, in Norway, they're very proud of the character of light in their culture. It's very low on the horizon, and it's like it really does have an incredible feeling. But what happened with Musa? <laughs> you never spoke to him again? Musa. I talk to him every now and then, but we lose touch. 
It's a culmination of so many years as an artist trying to break through and, and have something um, made on, on a Broadway stage.